So I've been talking about how this year was going to be the battle of the $500 smartphone and below. And I decided to grab about four or five phones together and tell you which are the ones that right now, if someone asked me what phone they should buy and only had $500 or less, which ones they should buy. Now, this is not a definitive list. There are certainly other phones I could put on this list, and I could even swap out and in some of the phones on this list with other phones. But these are five that I feel really confident about, and I feel like I can tell you about. You can buy them in the links in the description below and feel good about it. So let's get started. Oh, and by the way, one of them is an iPhone. I wanted to make sure that I had at least one iPhone in there. And I know what you're thinking. The only iPhone that's under $500 is the iPhone SE, but it's not that. It's actually something else. And I'll tell you what it is right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listen to, to Travis. What up, players? Welcome back. And for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below. But for now, let's just get into the video. Like I've been saying over the last couple of months, there are some incredible phones out for not so much money. I even went back and bought some older flagship phones here on this channel and reviewed them using the Amazon Renewed system. And let me tell you something, that's a pretty darn good way of getting some slightly older flagships and getting great performance. But even so, there's some phones you can buy new right now that are pretty darn good. And I'm talking anything from $500 all the way down to $250. Now that is a bargain basement price. I'm gonna give you five that I think are worth your time and money. Let's start at number five. To be clear, this isn't in any particular order. I just wanna start with the Galaxy A71. This phone costs about $360 with a 6.7 inch AMOLED screen, 1080p, a Snapdragon 730 with macro lens, ultra wide main and a depth camera, a 4,500 milliamp hour battery with 25 watt fast charging, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, and a headphone jack. Now the A series of Samsung phones, if you're not familiar, is kind of their mid-range. It's not their top of the line or anything like that. It's their mid-range of phones. It starts with like the A10. Uh, the A71 is kind of the higher of the lower. It's high-low, it's high-low, high-low. A lot of people know about the A50 and the A51. The A71 is their, like I said, they're slightly one half step above that. Now I've reviewed the A51 on this channel and the A71 is just a slight, slight bit higher than that. But obviously it's using a uh, middle of the road kind of processor, but you know Samsung, their stuff works and it's an AMOLED screen for under $400. Everything about this phone is legit. Now, is it better than other phones on this list? Not necessarily, but if you like a Samsung phone and you don't wanna go for the $500 option I'm gonna give you here in a minute, then the a 71s not a bad choice. And since it's newer, you should still be getting updates for this phone for quite a while. And the camera quality is gonna be fine. Everything about it's gonna be fine, but it's mid-range, so just keep that in mind. We're under $500 here. There is one thing you're gonna be able to do with all of these Android phones as far as the camera is concerned. And I'll talk about that as I get to one of my phones later on. So when I talk about different portions of the cameras and the different cameras they have, I'm not worried about the megapixel or anything like that. It's not that important because there is a saving grace for all Android phones. Next up is my favorite phone I've reviewed this year, the Samsung S10 Lite. Now I reviewed it here on this channel earlier this year. I wanna make sure you watch the video. I'll leave a link in the description below as well as an end card. I loved this phone. Now it's basically like an S10, but slightly amped up with just a couple of things they cut back. At just about $500 or $450 on sale, this phone will work on not only GSM, but CDMA. It has a 6.7 inch AMOLED display, a Snapdragon 855, eight gigs of RAM, a 48 megapixel main camera with a wide and a macro lens, 128 gigs of storage, and a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. And this thing was just amazing. I really loved the camera quality, the speed, like, there was not a thing I didn't really like about this phone. Now, of course, there were some drawbacks, but there's one thing that I know you're gonna like. That of all these phones, this has the Snapdragon 855, which was the top processor of 2019, only a year ago. And with some of these other Android phones, you're gonna hear other versions of Snapdragons, which will be just fine, but it's super nice to know you can get a top-end processor for under $500. Now, there is another uh, phone out there if you wanna buy something not directly from like Amazon or something, uh, that's about $580 and that's a beast. It is the Red Magic 5G. But I'm not gonna go over that phone right now because I don't really know how well they support their phones after the fact. I do know Samsung's gonna give you updates on this S10 Lite and it's just been a joy to use. I love it. 
It's still one of my favorite phones I've reviewed this year, and for the money, I don't think you can go wrong. Slightly lower in price is the Pixel 3a XL. Now this came out obviously a while back, so it's not exactly a new phone, but for just over 300 bucks, it's hard to beat. Six inch OLED display, Snapdragon 670, a 3700 milliamp hour battery, a 12 megapixel camera, four gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of storage. Now there's a couple things there that might give you some pause, but let me explain to you like some of the better things. Number one, everyone knows that the Pixel phones have an amazing camera, especially in night mode. And man, if you're into taking pictures, a Pixel phone is excellent. Not to mention the support's gonna be great as Google will continue to do updates for this phone for three years um, from the date that it was released. At least that's what they're currently saying. They might actually do even more, you never know. And you get those updates fast. You don't have to wait. One of the big drawbacks to Android, I've said this a million times before, is having to wait for updates. You don't have to for Pixel. It's, uh, it's out as soon as it's out. And like I said, the camera is legit. And this phone overall was one of the darlings of the year. But I will say that its biggest strength is kind of a thing that makes Android great and which can make all of these other Android phones perhaps better than this. And that is you can download Gcam, which is basically the extracted app for the phone. That's right, if you're not aware, the Pixel phones, which take amazing pictures, it, it has really nothing to do with the camera. It has to do with the software. And you can actually load that software on pretty much any of the phones that I'm mentioning today, including the, the least expensive phone, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. And it makes a huge difference on those phones. It's funny because when you take a picture with a, any of the phones here and it looks fine, and then you add Gcam, it's like next level. I have a friend that does this all the time. His name's Dave West. I'll leave a link to his uh, channel below. He takes a lot of these phones and he will put the Gcam APK on. And uh, I'll tell you, man, it's pretty amazing. So why don't you go check out his channel? I'll leave a link in the description. Um, you're going to be amazed at what this thing can do. I'm always talking about saving you money on phones, but it's probably time to help you save money on your actual phone bill. I've partnered with a company named Ting that's gonna help you do that. Ting offers LTE coverage on three of the four nationwide networks in America, so you'll get even greater coverage experience than the big carriers. Almost any phone will work on Ting. So bring your phone and get a $25 service credit at travis.ting.com. That's travis.ting.com. The average bill on Ting is just $23 a month with no contracts, so you can try Ting for a month with no strings attached. They're only charging you for what you use, and if you don't use it, you don't get charged pretty good deal in my book. From a price and performance standpoint, it's hard for me to bet against the TCL 10L. I really love this phone. For $250, this thing's a beast. While it's GSM only, you get a 6.5 inch LCD display, a 48 megapixel camera, super wide, macro and a depth sensing camera, 64 gigs of storage, six gigs of RAM, a Snapdragon 675, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and a headphone jack. A headphone jack is back, baby. And the fingerprint sensors on the back. I want you to watch the review for this. I'll leave a link uh, in the description below. It, it's such a great phone for an inexpensive price. And TCL is new, really kind of putting themselves out this year in the smartphone game, everything under 500 bucks. And they've really done a great job. This phone is right now my number one pound for pound, dollar for dollar phone. It just does what you need it to do. And the only shortcoming on it for me was the camera. But if you put Gcam on it, this phone is incredible. Battery life lasts you all day. The software is really great. They've been tweaking some things with it. I absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, can recommend this for $250. Download the Gcam app and uh, you good, man. You are absolutely good. Just you go ahead and buy it. Now, if you're on iOS, I have one solution for you. But the thing is, it's not exactly new. This might be cheating in a little way. You know that I am the Amazon renewed king on YouTube, baby. So I'm gonna give you an Amazon renewed deal. Now, obviously I could go for the iPhone SE from 2020. It's under $500, but I don't really like the, how small the battery is and I don't really like the size. I think the iPhone XR is actually the real deal, the real champion, the real MVP. It may not have the same processor as the SE, but that A12 is sweet. With a 6.1 inch display, this thing is everything you're gonna need. Now, people are gonna hate on the resolution in the comments below. But if you use it and you use it right, there's literally nothing wrong with this phone. It is the top selling phone in the world. The top selling phone in the world. 
You can hate on it all you want, but for under $500, this phone is a beast. The camera is incredible. The battery life is great, which is one of the main reasons I'm not saying the SE. The battery life on the SE uh, is not so great, but the, the battery life on the 10R absolutely is great. And I've actually done a video review in 2020 on that phone links in the description below and maybe on the end screen. And it's a great way to get into the iOS ecosystem if you're curious. I wouldn't really suggest the SC as your first dip your toe into iOS if you've never had an iPhone before. I would say the 10R is the right deal. Now you might be wondering, well, it's, you know, it's over a year old. Will the updates be a problem? Uh, no. It's rumored that iOS 14, the upcoming update, is actually gonna support the iPhone 6S. That phone is so old and they're still supporting it. I don't think you're gonna have a problem with many years of support on the iPhone XR. And using Amazon Renewed, you get a 90 day return policy. So really there's no risk at all to getting this phone. But for me, this is kind of one of the best values of all of the phones that I've told you. Now, of course, if you're not a iOS fan, if you're not an Apple fan, you're gonna disagree and say one of the Android uh, phones is, but I think if you just get, went up to a random person, gave them the iPhone XR and gave them some of these other phones and showed them how easy it is to, uh, to use, I think that they would agree. Regardless, they're all great phones, and there are other phones that could easily hit this list. Tell me, what phone should be in this top five budget in 2020 for your budget smartphone? Who's the manufacturer? Where should I get it? Should I buy it? Should I review it? Have I already reviewed it? Did I forget one? Leave me a comment below. And by the way, Amazon Renewed is such an amazing program. Check it out right here. I'll see you next time. Peace and love.